Welcome to the first tutorial for the Trano Taverns and Towns construction manual. In this video, we're going to be making Taverns and Towns walls. Now, these are similar to the basics walls, but we're going to cut out little bits on the exterior pieces to add a little bit more detail and also to make things like archways possible and to make doors. So let's get started. So you'll notice these templates look a little different than the basics templates. They have cutouts for the exterior parts of the walls. Well, that's because we're going to cut in designs to make a more detailed exterior. Now, the nice thing about these templates is one template can make a lot of different types of walls. So here you see five different ones, all from this one template. So keep that in mind. Um, there may not be as many templates as you see there are pieces. And it's because we're making many different types of pieces from the same template. And here we're going to cut out the interior piece from a pre-painted two-inch strip of foam board. And you'll also notice that on this strip of foam board, there is some masking tape on the bottom. And that's because that's how we used to make uh, train on version one. And I found there wasn't really that well that necessary, so I stopped doing it. And we're going to cut some more two-inch strips for the exterior pieces. Here I'm cutting four pieces because uh, that'll be enough to make all the pieces I'm going to make in this video. And I'm pre-scoring the... Uh, gaps between each one of the exterior wall pieces to make it easy to snap them off later. You'll notice there that uh, the foam started pilling and that's because this blade is dull and I do end up uh, replacing it. Now to draw that uh, pattern on there, I use a dull pencil because it's really easy to draw on top of the foam without tearing into it. So I just do that all across for all the pieces that I'm making. and then just cut them out with our utility knife, just like we did for the pocket doors in the basics manual. You start in one corner and then cut across and lifting your knife so it's 90 degrees to the foam itself to make sure we cut all the way across. And then it's just time to draw in the pattern. Now you'll see here I'm using a sharp pencil. For when you're drawing in patterns on the foam, you always want to start with a sharp pencil. And then if you want to make those patterns more defined, go over them with a dull pencil. This is very handy to do because there does seem to be like a skin on the top of the foam sometimes. And if you don't use a sharp pencil to first draw it, it doesn't cut through that skin. So when you try to go over with a dull pencil, it doesn't really take because it hasn't cut through that membrane in the foam. And you also notice if you look at the template itself, there's dotted lines on the template that actually correspond to all these lines that I'm making in the foam. Those lines are there for you to kind of, as a cheat sheet basically, so you can tell where uh, are good places to put your designs onto the pieces. So in this case, they represent the seams between each one of the wood beams. And now you'll see here I'm poking holes in it to sort of mimic nail holes. That's a really easy, quick way to do that. and just putting in a couple spots that I missed. Then it's time to give some wood grain. And yes, it's pretty much as simple as just with a light touch, drawing kind of swirly lines onto the foam. And the same for the verticals and the angle pieces. I don't really spend a whole lot of time thinking about this. I just kind of just do little squiggly lines on it. And then it's just time to paint them. Now we do paint these ahead of time because it's a pain to paint them afterwards. So yeah, it is, makes a lot of sense to paint them ahead of time. And by the way, that you saw that that was Apple Barrel's Nutmeg Brown, which is really great for wood. And here you'll see that I have two pieces that I pre-painted. And these look a little different because they're from a different template, but the process to glue them together is exactly the same. Just want to make sure you put on a nice light coat of hot glue there and then glue it to the interior piece.
and then just uh, glue on the other side. And then when they're done like this, you're just gonna take your paintbrush and paint more of that brown quick coat mixture onto the edges here to finish them up. And that will also help fuse the interior piece of the wall to the exterior pieces and make it more durable. So here we're using a different template to make an archway. We're tracing in those exterior parts of the wall. Now the only difference between making an archway and a regular wall is that we're going to glue one exterior piece onto uh, the interior wall piece and then cut out the archway before we put, up, put on the other exterior piece. And here I'm using the, you see those dashed lines on there? I'm using those to line up my grout lines for the stone parts of the texture. And you can see them on the finish piece to, above there. And then I just use a ruler to, to draw out those horizontal grout lines. And again, I'm using a sharp pencil for this because that kind of cuts through that membrane a little bit. And if you want to make these grout lines more defined after you've done the sharp pencil, just go over them with a dull pencil. And then sharp pencil for the vertical lines. And I ended up going over those as well with a dull pencil off camera. And then just like we did for the wood on the other ones, we're gonna put the wood details in here and a little bit of wood grain. And then the one out of step, since there's stone on the bottom, I'm gonna add some of my foil texture into that to make it look like stone. And it's really great to do this after you draw in the grout lines because it sort of softens them a little bit and makes them look more realistic. And then of course we're going to use a, a gray as well for the stone and then the same nutmeg brown for the uh, wood. We're going to cut an interior piece again from a pre-painted piece of uh, two inch strip foam board. Now remember we're only gluing on one side of the exterior because we want to make sure that we can cut out that uh, archway. Then after we cut out that archway, we will put on the other exterior piece. And once that's on there, it's just a matter of cutting out that archway. There you go. And then it's time to put on the other exterior piece. Now remember, you don't need a lot of hot glue on there. Just a little bit is fine. Because we will be painting uh, the exposed uh, pieces of foam with a quick coat again to fuse all these pieces together. So now not only will you be painting around the outside edge like you did before, but you're also going to be painting on that in inside archway area there to fuse the foam together there as well. And last but not least, we're going to be making a door piece. Now, the only difference between a door piece and an archway really is that we don't cut away that interior part of the wall. And we're also going to be painting the door onto that interior piece prior to assembling it with the exterior pieces. You'll see the sample above there is a little uh, wider than the one we're making. That's because the sample above there is a four square wide door. We're making a three square wide door. But the, uh, the, the process is the same for all the doors. So now I'm lining up that interior piece we just cut. By the way, you'll notice it's not pre-painted. And I'm going to mark out where the door is because I need to paint the door one color 
that's different than the color for the rest of the foam because we want to have that sort of tannish look to the other foam there uh, for the indented pieces of the wall that are left and right of the door. So I'm doing it on both sides because, you know, the door needs to be on both sides. And I'm just going to draw out that door. And you'll notice here I went straight to the uh, dull pencil. Sometimes you can get away with this, but you'll notice you can kind of tell after a while. Sometimes a foam doesn't have that kind of film on it, and sometimes it does. It is just better to use the sharp pencil first and then the dull pencil just to be sure. At least until you get a feel for the foam. And then I'm just putting in our wood grain. And don't forget to do this on the other side as well. Oh look, I made a mistake, but you know what? It's fine. It'll just add character to the door. And then it's time to paint it. I mixed up a little bit of blue quick coat for the door itself. And then just some tan for the other areas. You want to make sure this is completely dry before you assemble the pieces, but that's pretty much it. So there you go. Now it's assembled. Now uh, you're going to want to paint the outside edge uh, just like for the, you did for the other pieces. And that's it for walls. So if you haven't already, you can get started right now on your Torino journey by downloading the Torino construction manuals at GameGearMaster.com. They are consistently rated five stars and come with a 14 day hassle free money back guarantee. That means if Torino's not for you, no problem. You'll get your money back. No questions asked. Happy crafting. And a big thank you to my supporters on Patreon.com forward slash Game Gear Master. And a shout out to the architects on there who really go above and beyond. Brian Yao and William Dellinger, thank you so much. And apologies if I mispronounced your names. If you'd like to become a patron and get exclusive Trey No products, go to Patreon.com forward slash Game Gear Master.